Welcome to the Mental Fitness Podcast. Today's entrepreneurs are mental athletes that have to know about the mind and how to keep it fit. Our goal is to increase our resilience against stress and anxiety, optimize our productivity, motivation and optimism by learning about the human mind through psychology, neuroscience and human behavior. I'm your host Ozan. I'm a founder who has experienced the challenges of launching and growing a business and a keen student of human behavior over the last 15 years. I'll share with you what I know and learn. Hundreds of impactful, behavior-changing ideas are waiting to be discovered by us. Let's begin now. Let's talk about resilience. Resilience is endurance in the world of physical sports, or or that is the closest analogy that that we can relate that to. But in terms of mental resilience, let's start by defining what we actually talk about. When we say resilience, we actually talk about the human's capacity to be able to look at the, the, the situation she's in, understand the negatives about that, understand the challenges about that, but still come through with a positive mindset, or some hope for the future, and be psychologically and mentally composed enough to keep doing uh, what they're doing and, and, and have the motivation uh, and the drive to reach their further goals. And, and to go through the problems that life throws at you, and it, and it does, uh, without uh, traumas. So I think it makes sense to define what a trauma is, actually, what, it, what, what the meaning of the world, word is, but also how it relates to our understanding of the mental well-being of 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 an, of an human so the interesting thing is that each time uh when you do exercise let's talk about running each time when you go out for a run you actually exert a certain amount of pressure to all of your bones and impact and that actually creates micro fractures within the skeletal system and within the bones but what the body does is through sleep it actually heals those and makes it stronger compared to the previ- previous day this is also the same for uh, scar tissues uh, once you have a scar that healed part of your skin is actually stronger than than the surrounding tissue but these only happen if they heal properly and this is the most important bit this is exactly the same mechanism in uh, when talking about the mental health so when you run into a situation uh it can create a scar it can create a mental scar it can it can be a traumatic experience for you if you go through that difficult situation with a growth mindset and if you're able to heal then you actually become stronger at the places that you were hurt the most on the other hand, if you are not able to process what has gone on, and if you're not able to process uh, and and resolve that situation, then it is uh, that scar is not healed, and that is what is I think most aptly called trauma in terms of mental health. So, if you are able to go through with the problem, but find some meaning in it, uh, look at it from a growth mindset, improve yourself, and heal through that, you become stronger. If not, it becomes a trauma that comes up again and again in your life as a theme and which becomes problematic. So there are some dimensions of endurance and resilience. So let's let's talk about those. One of them is uncertainty tolerance. So people who have actually a tolerance for the unknown are able to thrive and survive better under situations where it is quite literally impossible to know what is going to happen in the future. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're doing your own business, um, then you are at a situation that you've put yourself in a situation where naturally unknowns are quite at the central stage in your life you do not necessarily know with a high degree of certainty what your pay is going to be like in six months from now on or st- what your status is going to be like uh, w- w- how much you enjoy doing the work so there are a lot of unknowns you don't know you're spending a certain amount of effort into creating the content working on the business but you you have you don't have a proof per se in your hand that th- things are going to turn out great so there is uncertainty about that but that uh, that uncertainty means a lot of people refrain from going into situations like like this and it gives you a competitive edge as long as you are able to 
manage that uncertainty tolerance. The second key dimension of understanding what en- endurance and resilience mentally is like goes through a uh, a philosophy that was actually introduced by Adam Grant in his book Give and Take. Uh, it is quite an old work now, but I think uh, it is very relevant. Um, so uh, basically, there are three broad categories, as he puts in his, in his research, of people. Uh, some of them look to take, some of them look to give, and some of them look to match. So takers think like this in every transaction financial commercial relationship based all of them they think about what can i take most from this transaction and what can i give uh, the least so they try to maximize their return make the best trade bo- for themselves and that's the taker position other people try to match it so the matcher personality goes like this okay i want to take what's best for me but i also want to give something and i want that to be fair so i'll try to match what i give between what i take and think of think of it like this you're at a networking event you meet a certain person and then you ask for a favor if that person is a taker you probably won't get any help if that person is a matcher you might get some help but the degree of help will be equal to, at least in his understanding of the person that you're asking the help from, in his understanding, equal to what he's going to take. So he, he wants to match what he's going to give and take. So th- those are the mature type of pe- people. And, and the last group is the people called givers. These people actually are out to give, out to help. And those are the people who do the introductions for you without you asking for them. Those are the people who actually go out of their way to help you. And interestingly enough so when they um when they lay out these people in terms of their success and and then their satisfaction uh what 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 turns out is at the very very bottom of that list are givers and also at the very very top of that list are again givers matchers dominate uh the uh, the, the upper half of that list and then takers dominate the lower half of that list uh, talking roughly so, so the, the, going back the interesting thing about the giver ideology is there are two types of givers those who give with a sense of purpose and those who give without exactly knowing why they give why they help others so people in the second group uh, those who do not give with a sense of purpose usually burn out very quickly and these this theme goes back to uncertainty tolerance and endurance if you're working as an entrepreneur so entrepreneurs give they give a lot but they have to give with a certain sense of purpose they have to know why they are working towards they have to know and 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 understand really well uh what it is what is it that they're serving towards so look at look back at your life and your situation if you're in the position of a taker and a matcher could you shift to a giver position? And if you're in the position of a giver, make to make sure that you do not burn out. What can you do to make sure that you give with a sense of purpose? What is the overarching theme there? Um, the third one is, is essentially clarity of purpose because of this reason. So the fourth dimension is that of the growth mindset. And this is possibly the most important thing for a resilient um, outlook on life and in, in, in a worldview. Uh, so essentially every situation every problem that we run into can be taken either as obstacles uh, or unwelcome problems or they can be seen as puzzles that will reward us as we solve them um in in the latter way of thinking we see ourselves as non-static uh, constantly changing dynamically learning units of uh, growth uh, we see ourselves a- as individuals that have huge untapped potentials, but those potentials can only be displayed as we put ourselves into more challenging situations and experience life more. So I'm 35. Uh, imagine I-, 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 I have this internal monologue with myself uh, when I go through this thinking process. I used to think what uh, my quality of thinking process was like when I was 30 years old versus 25 years old versus 20 years old and if i see a progression increasing the quality of way that i can think quality of the of the the way that i can produce work then this is a good version of that this this is this is a good checkpoint for me to say okay i can establish a certain reflex 
uh, that I when I when I run into situations that are difficult for me, I can trigger that growth mindset set and look at the situation. Okay, this is maybe not the ideal. This doesn't feel very good at this moment, but what can I do? What can I take away from this? What can I learn so I don't repeat the ma ma same mistakes again? So that's the growth mindset. And the, it, the, it, the ideal edge of that is becoming almost godlike in terms of your understanding, perception, um, and problem solving abilities. So become this, um, going back to our original analogy of the gym of the human mind. So physically become almost like a Greek god. Uh, become the best of what you can and I think this is true at a mental level as well So what is the potential best version of yourself and are you making a progress towards that? So how do we actually build the mental resilience and, and keep that mental resilience high? Uh, first of all having a hope for the future and that hope comes from two things as I said growth mindset knowing that you'll be a better version of yourself believing in that and the second dimension hope actually comes from understanding the world and understanding the word world clearly and believing as a result of that that you have essentially a potential to make a big impact now your impact might not be in direct ways it might not be rewarding in in short bursts of time so you might spend six months working on a project and on on the six month and one day it might not be the most rewarding thing for you ever but on the other hand down the line five or six years later it might change somebody's perception of a topic and that might that person um, might change another person and through these cascading effects uh, it is quite difficult it's quite chaotic to try to understand what your effect to the world can be but we know for a fact that positive actions and creative um, effort has that huge potential so knowing this about the world although accepting that it is not very direct it's not very clear but there is an, a cause and effect relationship between what we try to do and also having a, a growth mindset uh, it, it are the foundations of that hope the second one is humor and humor is really important because it goes back to the idea of life is what happens to you when you're making plans and it is the thing that laughs at you so if you can understand uh, if you can look at the situation that you are currently in or, or, or that you, you, you have been in with a certain sense of humor and and see take a lighthearted approach and see the fun in that, then this actually creates this incredible strong barrier, a uh, mental barrier where you protect your core psychology, your core identity and look at things from a certain distance with a certain appreciation a certain understanding and and a certain loving and liking and understanding of how chaotic and how interesting things can be sometimes so that humor is at the core of that the third one is relationships and community we are social beings we cannot survive alone and and a big part of that goes to you exist as a tribe what is your tribe who, who is your tribe made up of so where do where, where do you see those people if you're an entrepreneur um if you can change your lifestyle to that to, a, to one of meeting with people regularly going to a co-working space meeting with people online and close and um, strengthening those relationships with you have with your family and your friends and, and all the people around you then this gives you a much, much higher confidence uh when you run into a solution and uh, problem and you can seek solutions with the people that you meet and you can uh, t take their um, perspective and and have, have, a, have a second opinion on things so it builds into that resilience as well so finally going back to the growth mindset and the trauma example I just want to underline and remind that endurance is at the very core of it tied to these dimensions uncertainty tolerance clarity of purpose giving, taking, matching, and knowing yourself, um, embracing that growth mindset, understanding the world clearly, and, and appreciating that you can have an effect. And building on these core dimensions, you can focus on hope, humor, relationship and community, and growth mindset uh, to develop your um, endurance muscles. Hope you enjoyed this chat. I'll see you and talk to you in the next one.